Wagwan people, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rome. This is the fourth official. Thank you guys for watching. And before we get started, please hit that like button, that subscribe button, and share the channel if you can. And let's get into it. Well, today we're going to take a little twist on the fourth official today. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about Mesut Ozil and his apparent situation at Arsenal. And we're going to be asking the question, why is Mesut Ozil apparently locked up in the Arsenal penitentiary? And to understand the situation, you first have to understand the man. So Mesut Ozil was born in Gelsenkirchen, Germany in 1988. And he was born to Turkish parents, which, which makes sense because Mesut Ozil doesn't sound like a German name, does it? It's not like Bastian Schweinsteiger or Oliver Kahn or Hitler. <laughs> You're going to get the Hitler reference real soon. Notice, however, that his parents were devout Muslim and so was Mesut Ozil. This is a small fact. However, it will be integral in our story when we move forward. Ozil started playing in his local club at Schalke 04 um, before he made his big move to Werder Bremen in 2008 at the age of 19. He won the DFB Pokal which is the German equivalent of the, FA, of the FA Cup. These were the type of performances that brought him to Real Madrid just two years after he joined Red Bull. One of his best performances came. He had the league leading assist for three seasons run. It was during this time that he decided, while in his prime, to move to Arsenal. I'm talking about peak, who was at the top of his game. Since joining Arsenal, Ozil helped Arsenal end their nine year drought of not winning a trophy. He also had the second highest assist total in one season for Arsenal, that was 19. And I'm not even gonna lie, it was Ozil in an Arsenal shirt that showed me the best goal I've seen in the Europa League in all my time watching football. So Ozil is now just a mere reserve member of the Arsenal team. He's not being considered for the league 25 man squad. Instead, what you'll see is Reese Nelson, Mohamed El Nini, fucking El Nini. Now, if you were to go to Ozil and say, hey, yo, bro, 2020 is terrible, isn't it? I've never seen anything like it. You know what Ozil reply would be? Nah, bro, I've been living 2020 for the past two years. Because 2018 started off real well for Ozil. It started off like you say both in the Olympic finals, bro. He signed a contract for Arsenal worth 350 pounds. 350 pounds. That is what we call brick pump brick. And then came the summer. You know that little thing that happens every four years in the world of football? You remember the results, right? And the Germans used Ozil as a scapegoat for that humiliation. You know, and it was this and amongst other things why he decided to resign. And in the statement of his resignation, he said, when we win, I'm German. But when we lose, I'm Turkey. Ozil's form has been inconsistent, to say the least. But... Ozil didn't really hit rock bottom at Arsenal until he sent out this particular tweet. Can't read it? No worries. Luckily for you, I'm fluent in two languages. Unfortunately for you, none of them is freaking German. I don't even know if that's German. But the long and short of that tweet right there is Ozil pointing the finger at China, saying they're responsible for some misdoings to Muslims in that country. Now, our lawyers here at the fourth official has told me that I should say very clearly that China has denied all these allegations. Think back to when I told you Ozil was a devout Muslim and he stood by his statement. However, China didn't like it. Now Arsenal got caught between a rock and a hard stone. You can defend your player, the most valued and most well-paid player, or you can defend China, which you get most of your broadcasting funds from which you get most of your merch being sold in. And for Arsenal, this seemed to have been an easy, an easy answer. Organizations do not like to go against China. You cannot sell your merch in China if you are under Chinese government and not in codes. You cannot broadcast your games in China if you're under Chinese government and not in codes. And so the end result, Ozzy was castized and set aside to rot in the Arsenal penitent. Now let's get back to the football side of it. Arsenal have been struggling for the past 10 games to score goals, which obviously suggests that they're lacking in some sort of creativity. Again, they're playing with El fucking Nini. Instead of playing your most creative player for the past four or five years, Arsenal's manager, Mikel Arteta, came out and said, Ozil is not in this 25-man squad because of footballing reasons. So let's rewind a little bit. Take a second. Arsenal cannot score goals because they have no creativity in their midfield. Your most creative footballer is sitting at home playing Fortnite and you says he's out of the team, not because of injury, not because he's no good, but because of footballing reasons. Don't make sense. But you know what does make sense? Mikel Arteta did not make this decision. This decision came from higher ups. 
This decision came from the owners and the board, the people who are looking at the money part. Mesut Ozil, because he pointed a finger at China, he will not play for this club again. Hence, Arsenal fans are sitting there watching Danny Caballos, El Nini, and Granite Jacker, bro. And Thomas Partey, who has been in a hospital bed more times than a band-aid. No, I'm not a fan of Mesut. I am a fan of football, and I think what's happening to him is wrong. But I do love to see Arsenal fans squirm. But here you have it, people. That is the story of Mesut Ozil and why he's locked up like cartel and can't get out. Go ahead and drop a like on the video if you agree with me that Mesut Ozil should be let go, should be set free. Share the video, let other Arsenal fans in. Subscribe to the channel. Why not?